All right, folks. I'm definitely going to be going on AEW's case right here. It tends to be swole because, ladies and gentlemen, on YouTube, it's the Natural Born Thriller. And welcome everyone to All Elite Wrestling Review, the show from, excuse me, um, March 22nd, 2021. This will be the second episode of AEW Dark Elevation with your commentators, uh, Paul White and Tony Giovanni. And. Um, at Jacksonville, Florida, at Daddy's place. So let's get right into it. The opening match was Ray Lane versus Ty Conti, and the match I thought it was decent, very, very, very decent match between the two. Uh, from an old, uh, you know, basically Ray Lane uh is the old uh VW uh Women's World Champion, uh going up against uh in AWs uh Ty Conti. And both of them are really well together in, in the match. Obviously, Ty Conti uh, was the better of, of the match. Um, was the dominant of the match. And, and then she, in the end, she wins with the, the DD tie. Which probably is the Hamlock DDT, but she's closing it. The DD tie. And yeah, she got the win. And yeah, I'm going to say about that. Uh, it, was, it, was showing, also, it was also a good showing from, um, from Ray Lane as well. Don't know much about her again, or really, or other than the, the, the two matches I saw of her. One from Abaddon, and the other one from, uh, right here uh, was in Tai Conti, so. Then we get to Lee Johnson being accompanied by Dustin Rose, as Lee Johnson goes up against uh, Adam Pri uh, Priest. And after so, it was pretty decent. Uh, Lee Johnson is really uh, showing how good he, he is. In the end, he did get the win. And, and, and the, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, his finishing move... He calls it the brain dog, and all I could think about when I heard about uh, that's um his finishing move, the brain dog, which I already forgot how uh it he does the move, the brain dog, but um, but when I think about uh brain dog, I I think of uh Crackbone from YouTube, uh who's know the you know <laughs> to do prank calls, who know the um, to do uh video gaming uh you know streams. Um, it, it just goes deck, uh, deck, uh, two days, you know, decades, uh, you know, when you were know, obviously when YouTube first began, uh, in, in the 2000s. And all the, um, and he's, you know, I guess he, uh, started, uh, getting more exposure of it in, um, you know, later in, in the, uh, in the years. Uh, and then all here, uh, from Crackbone is, I got them brain dogs. I got them brain dogs. Now, I don't know if anyone, anyone remembers uh, Crackbone. Uh, we're seeing him saying, I got the brain dogs, I got the brain dogs. And he, uh, he, he does other things too, you know. Uh, you know, where, he's, where he says, uh, you, you can't even read, you can't even read, you can't even talk, you can't even talk. Uh, he, and he, he's like, uh, I remember some other things that like, he, like he says, um, you're, you're just talking all this bullshit and all, and all that. Uh, and he, he got on uh, one guy's case, where he to his website and saying, oh, I read your website and it's a pile of bullshit. Like, I know your website, it's just a pile of bullshit. And then uh, uh other things too, um you know, like I'm on your roof. I'm on your roof. Uh you know, fuck face, fuck face asshole, that's my name. <laughs> oh man, those 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 were the days, man. Those were that's where that, those were the days were of YouTube. Uh man, it was it was it was good times. Um But yeah. That's what it reminds me of, um, Brain Dog. So every time when Lee Johnson hits the Brain Dog, that's what it's, it's going to remind me of. I got them Brain Dogs. Uh, okay. So yeah, but that was that match. Uh, Lee Johnson was good. Dasha Gonzalez, she interviews uh, Ryan Nemeth, asking him about his opponent against Orange Cassidy. Uh, appear, you know, where appears to be sharing uh, praise for Orange Cassidy, but saying that he is no, um, you know, Highwood hunk, you know, and you know that whatever it's not that so, and he finds it disgusting. He's disgusted about uh, Orange Cassidy, and he's offended of Orange Cassidy, and that's basically it. Basically, we're saying it's Orange Cassidy style, and we'll, we'll get to that match later. Franco Del Sol and uh, Jake St. Patrick, they went against the Varsity Blondes, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. Matches up was pretty decent. Well, oh, both teams are looking good. Um, and in the end, it was. The varsity bonds winning, and I think the way the way they won, uh, figured they'll still trickle for his tornado DT. Uh, um, oh, 
I think he, he did hit the 3 T. Uh, as uh, Greg Carson hit the um, the, the, um went, basically had the blind tag to uh, the Brian Pillman Jr. because Brian, Brian Pillman Jr. was legal and he, he gets uh, the uh, turn the AT, but runs into a uh, discus uh, punch by Greg Carson. Greg Carson gets the win, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, match is over. Uh, like I said, it was decent. Now, Fagger's also um, can actually hit the uh, turn the AT. Now, the problem now the problem is now he can never win with it because he never capitalized on the on this. So. Uh, Caster, Mass Caster, I should say, he drops uh, a diss rap onto Ryzen, saying, "Yo, Ryzen, you should get a different lame, um, um, some, you know, something." Um, I think I'll re refer to his name, saying that is lame, whatever. Maybe like uh, that butter because you're going down the drain and saying something about your red hair, uh, got a little uh, like a, a maxi pad. <laughs> so they had a match, Rising versus uh Platinum Masscaster, and Masscaster wins with the the mic drop. So yeah, nobody to say about that. Uh yeah, right. I, I didn't care about Rising at all. So we get to now Rising Star vignette for Red Velvet. Last time they did one was with let's see who was it with was it was it Lee, Lee Johnson? I think it was Lee Johnson. Yeah, Lee Johnson. Now we got Red Velvet, where she discussed her pro wrestling journey, uh, from from uh from boxer to dancer to now wrestler. Because her um you know her, her father was a boxer, and and she knew that she knew uh, when she was on um, doing boxing that that wasn't her passion, uh and then she ends up being you know ends up doing dancing and they and they show uh, you know, a lot of these uh these uh, uh videos of her of her dancing. She was she was pretty good. She she looked pretty good, but she uh, her goal was to be a wrestler. And Cody Rose uh, no notes that Red Velvet isn't uh, signed and praise her, uh, you know, working at AW. Uh, she is not a uh, a fill in uh, because the holding with uh, Brandy Rose, you know, the whole the holding with her being pregnant and everything because it, it was supposed to be Brandy Rose and everything. Uh, and and Cody, you know, it was supposed to be Cody and Brandy Rose versus Shaquille O'Neal and Jay, Jay Cargill. Uh, but she's proven, you know, Red Velvet that she's not uh, a fill in, that she is not a substitute. She is going uh, to matter in AW, which she is. She does matter in AW, uh, and as she will bring everything that that she's got. And yeah, there you go. Um, it was good. I love I love these vignettes that they do every week on on AW uh, Dark Elevation. If this is uh, how they're going to be doing things. That's great. I love it. Uh, they they keep more doing more of this. You know, where it tends to uh, you're know, building up uh, up up and comers in AW that are signed. And Lee Johnson is one of them that's signed. And Red, Red Velvet also, I should say too, as she's also signed too as well with AW. Um, she's here to stay. Um, and I like that she's uh, that she says she's not a fill-in and, and a substitute. And, and because all you know, all there is is uh, people are are saying that she's the mini uh, Brandy Rose. No, she's not. Because uh, unlike on um, Brandy Rose, Red Velvet actually can wrestle. So there you go. Now let's get to this part. Uh, Leva Bates and Mandy R R Rankowski teaming up, even though they don't like each other, but okay. And it showed here on this match too. As they go up against the, the team of Big Swole and Red Velvet. So they're, they're doing their entrance, you know, Big Swole and Red Velvet. They're having a good time, you know, you know stirring it up and, you know, dancing with, you know, next to one, one another. They're having a good time. So I'm saying myself, Wait a minute, where's the big swell that talk about, yo, that she's unappreciative, underutilized, yo, she's gonna show a new attitude and all that, she's gonna, she's gonna uh, get back into the towel picture and everything, and now we're forgetting all about that, and now she's having a good time with Red Velvet, uh, uh, per, uh, all, the, all these two teams pairing up together, uh, against, uh, against these two, uh, I'll, I'll get to the match, uh, uh eventually, uh, once, once I get done, done with this, but, like, what was the point of doing all that with Big Swole, if you could just, uh, you know, just rile off and just forget about that? Yeah, so apparently now Big Swole has forgotten about uh, about her her going life now, moving forward. So yeah, well, like, what was the point of doing that shit with her uh, before we got to a uh, revolution from that dark show, and then you and then you have her um being at revolution. Not only the cameraman didn't show her uh, that much, but it seems to absorb into her and all that, you know. And then and then the commentators didn't even talk about about Big Swole, um e either, which seems to um uh, you know. About her watching this match and everything, where she wants an opportunity against uh, whoever's who coming out as the AEW Women's World Champion, and then they did nothing with that, and then they did something else uh, with that, 
And then with Big Swole, uh, yo, showing this new attitude against, um, uh, I already forgot who wrestled against, like, what was it, Skylar Moore? Only for them to uh, just forget about that, and just, you know, and she's now with uh, Red Velvet. Like, like the whole thing um, has, has never been, um, it's like, it's like they only changed their minds. I like, <sighs> so stupid, so stupid. But I will say this. I love the pairing of Big Swole and Red Velvet. It's a better pairing than Red Velvet and Brandy Rose. At least Big Swole can wrestle better than Brandy Rose. I'll say that. Big Swole ain't, ain't that great either, but uh, we're seeing her, 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 her ring abilities. Uh, but she's but I, I could tolerate her more than Brandy Rose in the ring. But uh, who's better um, uh, overall is Red Velvet. So the match happens. This is a match. So uh, Leva Bates and uh, Randy Rakowski was not working together as, as a team. Which that, that ends up being a downfall. So Leva Bates leaves her. I don't remember how it happened though. Um, I think it's about Rankowski. Uh, I can't remember how she did. Did it evolve the um, you know, Leo Base book, whatever. I don't know, but either way, Leo Base uh, had enough. She left, left, left behind and dry, and uh, obviously, Big Swole and Revo won. Revo got the win by the way with a shotgun drop kick. Uh, well, the single leg. Uh, I should say the uh, this, the single leg uh, drop kick. Uh, she needs to uh, come up with a uh, name of that move, by the way. But yeah, uh, but baseball and River wins, and they start uh, doing the dance dancing celebration. All of a sudden, Jay Cargill, Vicky Guerrero, and uh, Nada Rose come out, and they stare down on Big Swole and Red Velvet, which they uh, they invited them to the ring, and. All of a sudden, Jay Cargill, Vicky Guerrero, and Nada Rose leave. And like, what was the point of them coming out? Just have a stare down, and then all of a sudden they walk away. And Big Swole and uh, Red Velvet went back to, uh, to dancing. I did not understand that at all. I don't know, I don't know if that's supposed to be something on, on a, a new program. Where it seems to uh, you know, a tag team match for these two uh, fleet, uh, these two teams. That's nothing. Um... It, it Jay Cargo as part of the girls' uh thing now, where it tends to the uh the, the vicious vixen. Yeah, what happened to that by the way? The whole thing with the uh big girl said the, the vicious vixen. It's just what she had in mind too. I, I like, like what what was the point of her uh, bringing up on the whole uh, vicious vixen? If you're not gonna uh do anything with, with it, uh I thought you know it tends to the whole thing. Or, you know, it's gonna be leading to her building up a faction. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing with that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If this is what she had in mind with, with Jay Cargo being part of it now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where they're going with this. It, it's like they uh they don't know they don't know what to do and to, until they on um, until they uh, figure out what they, what they are are planning on doing, uh moving, moving forward. I don't know. It's it's very confusing. Dasha Gonzalez. She is interviewing uh Ethan Page, asking him about his matchup uh, against Five, and he says that he'll add more um you know number to to uh to his winning um you know. And he said that the only numbers that he cares about are wins, and that he uh, he'll care. Uh, he, he'll take care of five, you know, once he gets once we get to that match. So we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, but yeah, um, good problem there from each page either way. Uh, we get to Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaac going up against Team Taz, which is Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks being accompanied by Hook. So match happens. Um, and Team Taz wins. Nobody to say about the match. Paul Hobbs got the win, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was um Ricky Starks with the uh Rochambeau. Sorry. Uh, I, I I was thinking about some. I think I was thinking about the other match that uh that Will Hobbs was involved that he won. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't remember or not. But Dane Lambert going up against uh Baron Black. 
and this was a good match um from the, from the two guys you know these two guys are very good wrestlers and i love the um you know the chemistry between the two in the end it was dan limelight winning with the renegade choke making him you know baron black tap out so very very good match <laughs> orange cassidy versus ryan nemeth a match i thought was pretty decent and in the end it was orange cassidy winning with the mouse trap after the match though Ryan Nemeth, uh, you know, goes for his uh, reverse neckbreaker. Chuck Taylor, Chuck Taylor, excuse me, goes in for the save. But then gets taken out by J.D. Drake. And I say to myself, wait a minute, why, why is he getting involved here? So basically, they, you know, J.D. Drake uh, is now going to be paired up with uh, Ryan Nemeth, Cesar Bononi, and Peter Avalon now. So yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's someone that they wanted. To all they have as pertains to this faction that they're, they're gonna be um building up with Peter Aval Avalon, well, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. So, Ethan Page versus Five of the Dark Order. Match itself was pretty good, uh, from both from both parts of uh, of this match. Uh, both looked good, but obviously in the end, Ethan Page wins with the the Eagles Edge. After the match, he cuts a uh, he he cuts a promo. He has a microphone from um, Justin Roberts, but Justin Roberts uh, was going to hand it hand it to him um, as he's um, uh, you know, on the floor, and he's like, "No, you come up here and give me the mic," and that's and that's exactly what he did. Yo, know, Justin Roberts gave him uh, got you know, got um, got up on the stage and gave him the mic, and he said he's, he's not going to lower down to your level. I'm going to you you, you, give me, you give me the mic, you give me the mic. You no, know? I loved it. I love how he he did that. You know, and he says, "Everyone at home is great, but." Calls out his um his future competitor, I mean his, his competition, I should say. And says that he got uh, a lesson in how to be the greatest uh, in pro wrestling. He tells the viewers at home to get used to uh, this to, to his face because he's going to be in AW for a long time. So there you go. So he made so uh, yeah he's gonna be with AW for a long time. Hopefully he keeps his word. And not go elsewhere. But we'll see. Uh, Ryu Mizunami versus Layla Hirsch. Actually, so was pretty good uh, from both sides. And this was the main event. Uh, in the end, it was. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Ryu Mizunami winning the match, um, making Layla Hirsch tap out into the Anaconda Vice, which she kept rolling around and around and around until finally uh, to a point where uh, Layla Hirsch couldn't take no more and she, she tapped out. And. Yeah, it was a good match though. Um, I love um, I love how, how these two are uh, you know re really uh gel well together in the match and nothing to say. So yeah, and that was your uh uh results for AW Dark Elevations from March twenty second, twenty twenty one for this all elite wrestling review. The Toma Wrestling were ten matches, and my overall strength for the show, I gotta say this show was a lot more better than episode one. So. I'm gonna give this show an 8 out of 10. And with that being said, thank you all for watching. For this natural born thriller, saying peace on the streets. Take care.